In my previous video I had a look at the Sonoff 4 channel switch, the Sonoff 4CH Pro. Um, it was a Wi-Fi enabled device which also has RF on it. Um, and in that video if you want to have a look I'll show you how to use it with the EWE Link software that, that comes with it. Um, it comes pre-installed with firmware on the board. What I'm going to do in this video is have a look at trying to install a uh, different firmware. So I'm planning to reflash it with firmware called ESP Easy. Happily, because it's an, a Sonoff device, um, these already come with pre-prepared headers. Well, I say pre-prepared, the, the headers are supplied on the board. They're not populated on this board. Um, but I'm hoping, and I'll find out as I start to play around with this, that I'll be able to um, reflash the device simply by populating this heading and then finding some way of putting it into its bootloader mode. So to begin with, what I'm just going to do is get one of these uh, four-way headers. Um, my workshop is all packed up just now after a house move, so I'm using my kind of portable port soldering iron, which uh, is a pretty disgusting device, but we'll, um, we'll make do with it. So, to begin with, I'm just going to pop these on the board. And then I'm just going to load a tiny bit of solder onto the iron. Um, just enough, because I want to tack in the first of the pins. Now I'm not too worried at the moment about getting that pin actually straight or anything else. I just want it to stay in position so that I can uh, then hopefully solder in the rest of the pin. So now that I've got one in place, I'm just going to apply some solder to the other pins. Get everything straight. And that seems to be one pin, nice and straight. So now that that's one pin done, I'm just going to apply solder to the other pins. I can't even find my brass sponge, so I'm having to flick solder off. I'm working with a dirty iron, but for this job, which is pretty crude, I've got more than enough. That's it. I can switch the soldering iron off before it burns my house down. And uh, what I now need to do is play around with this to try and find out how to get it into a bootloader mode. Um, the firmware we're going to install is ESP Easy. Um, the version I'm going to install is version 2, which is uh, sometimes called the Mega Branch. It's just the most up-to-date branch. Um, normally when I've worked with Sonoff devices, I've used one of these programmers to work with it. I uh, don't know if you can see this. It's um, pretty standard programmer you can get off the uh, internet. It uses um, a USB to serial connection. Um, in this case uh, an FTDI. Um, and the one that I use here um, has the option to uh, either use it 3.3 volts or 5 volts. Now the ESP controller that we're going to be working with, the ESP8285, which is this device here on this module, um, it runs at 3.3 volts. Um, I have tried already to um, use the the VCC from this to power the whole board and, and use that to, to do the upload. Um, unfortunately that didn't work particularly well for me. Um, and I think the reason why is, is that there's just there's so much going on in the board that the 3.3 the volts which has been powered direct off this, this chip's internal source it just wasn't enough to run the board successfully. Um, I did actually get it to flash once or twice um, but I think they were more flukes than, than they were actually um, a good practice. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to uh, upload the bootloader. Um, but whilst doing so, I'm going to power the, um, the machine using, um, using a, a separate voltage. Um, so to begin with, I'm just going to uh, plug this in. So um, I've got, I don't know if you can see the back here. Um, it's upside down, but hopefully you can see it if this will just tune in there. Um, the black cable here is connected to ground. And I'm connecting that to the ground on the Sonoff uh, board. The next cable I have here is the, the green cable is connected to TX. That's um, transmit on the um, USB to serial adapter. Um, this is going to connect to RX. 
on the um, Sonar board. And the yellow cable is connected to RX on this controller and it's going to connect to TX on the board. So basically on this board it's RX to TX, TX to RX. So that's the controller there itself. Um, there's no power to the board just yet so, so this won't do anything when I connect it to my computer. Um, but what I'm going to do to begin with is I'm going to put this um, device into bootloader mode. Now with the ESPs, normally to put them into bootloader mode, what you do is you connect the ESP, um, or sorry, the GPIO 0 pin to ground. Um, and with a lot of the Sonoff devices, the first button or the, um, the button, that, um, the only button on some of the devices is connected to GPI 0. So basically you can power the device up with the first button held down and that does it. Um, this device doesn't quite work the same way. And the reason for that is that as well as having the ESP8285 chip here um, connected to the buttons, etc., we actually have a sort of chip sitting in the road of it. It's this ST chip here. Um, and what the ST chip is doing basically is, depending on the settings that you've chosen using the dip switches, it will send on off switches um, dependent on the button strokes here. Um, it will also decode the RF signals and send button strokes on them. Um, so it, it's kind of sitting in between. And the problem I have with this is, is when I power the device on, I haven't found a way yet of forcing this to set GPIO0 to, to ground. Um, so what I'm going to do is use um, a, a jumper cable to do the same thing. So this is the jumper cable I'm going to use. The first part I'm going to connect to ground. Now if you look on the board itself, there's some other headers here. I could have populated these headers um, and, and soldered some headers on. That might be quite a smart way of doing it. Um, but because I don't plan to use them again, they're um, connected to the ST chip, which I'm never going to reprogram, I don't think. Um, what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to pop this header and I'm just going to rest it inside the pin here marked ground. Um, and basically what's happening here is it's just friction itself is holding that um, contact to the ground. I then I'm going to hold the pin like so. Um, I'll put a picture up because you possibly won't be able to see on the video here what I'm doing. But um, if you look across the bottom of the ESP8255 module, um, I'm counting one and then two along. And I've looked at some data sheets, etc. And um, my calculations tell you that that is GPIO0. And with a jumper cable like this, I'm able to just push that jumper cable up against it. So basically I've got the ground connected on this end just by friction fit and then the other side here I've got it just pushed physically against the GPIO0 pin or what I know to be the GPIO0 pin. Now what I'm now going to do is power this um, and I'm using the DC connection here um, and I've connected this. This is a 12 volt DC supply that I've got connected here. Now that's going to provide the power to the chips etc so I don't run out of power as I was doing when I tried it using just the USB adapter alone. Um, and it will connect via, or it will power it through its own um, uh, systems here. Now in the past when I've tried to connect Sonoff devices, um, it's really not recommended to have them attached to the mains. So it's very important that I'm using a DC supply here to provide the power. Um, if you try to attach it to the mains, at best, if you're lucky, your USB port will um, trip on your computer and you might have to reset the computer. At worst, you might do some actual damage to your computer itself. So um, I'm using the DC supply here for a very good reason. So just to recap, I've got the ground held in place just by friction. Um, I've got the pin um, second from the bottom held in place um, with my fingers here and uh, with that I'm going to plug the DC power in and um, that puts the device into bootloader mode. Now what I'm going to do is um, download some software on the computer. Um, I'm going to, uh, as a precaution, I raise the flash um, just in case there's anything in that flash that's going to bother me um, and then I'm going to upload the ESP Easy 
version 2 um, from a pre-configured BIN file um, onto the board and then configure it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go to my web browser. Um, I already have this in my bookmarks, but I'll leave a, a comment um, in the description to uh, help you find it. So I'll click on the releases and this will show me the releases. Now, although this is a development version that I'm working with here, it seems to be pretty stable. I've not had any problems with it. So I'm just going to download it. It'll now download. It'll take about 12 seconds or so to download. Now that it's downloaded, I'm just going to open it and I'm going to choose to extract all. Again, it'll take a few seconds just to extract the latest version of the firmware. And uh, that's my now my extracted files. Now, at this point, I could just try and use the flashing utility and um, a, try and just flash it straight away. Um, what I'm just going to do as a precaution is I'm just going to choose um, PowerShell. And I'm going to erase the flash on the device. So um, I've already installed Python 2.7 onto my computer, and I've also used the pip installer to install something called ESP tool. Um, the command I'm going to give it is ESP tool dot py py minus p com5, which is my com port, minus b 115200 erase underscore flash. Now, that should just erase the flash on the ESP8285 chip. And I'm doing this as a precaution because uh, if there's any kind of old settings from the um, the firmware that was previously on it, uh, this should just delete it. Um, as I said, this is a precaution. It'd probably be fine just to try it without it. But um, I've closed that down. Now what I've done from the extracted files is I'm just going to open the flash ESP8266.exe file. And that will open the utility which is looking at COM5, and I'm going to give it the correct firmware, which in this case is going to be the um, ESP8285.bin. You might notice that there's various versions um, of the firmware, some for 1024K um, flash memory, some for 4096, um, but the 8285 only has one, and that's because it has its own inbuilt flash, which is uh, limited to 1K. So I'm uh, just going to go for the normal version of this, and select that. There are test versions and things. I'm, I'm not going to bother with them because they give me a lot of extra features that, that simply I won't use. And I'm going to click, uh, sorry, before I do so, I'm just going to repower it with the um, a, a GPIO0 held to ground. And with that done, I'm going to click flash. And hopefully, yep, you'll see it on the screen here. It just gives me the dots progress to show me that it's um, uh, right in the flash. So this is the ESP2 firmware just installing itself on the Sonoff S4 um, channel Pro. And it says flash complete. So with a bit of luck, that should now be installed. The last thing I'm going to do is just remove um, that uh, uh, jumper that I was using before. I'm going to restart the Sonoff 4 channel Pro device. So I'm just powering it up again. And I'll give it a minute or two. And if I look, it's a Windows PC, so I'm just going to have a look at the available Wi-Fi networks. And of the Wi-Fi networks that have appeared, there's now one here that says ESP0, and it's suggesting it's secured. So I'm going to give that a click to open it. Uh, basically, this Sonoff behaves like a, a station, um, which I should be able to connect to. And at this point, I can give it the credentials that it requires to connect to my Wi-Fi network. So we'll give it a moment or two while it just um, connects itself. And here we go, you can see a list of the, this is my routers and all my neighbours routers, um, that it's detected. So I'm going to click one of my routers in this case, and then I'm going to just copy and paste the password that I've prepared earlier, and then I'm going to choose connect. It's going to count down for 20 seconds or so, and hopefully in that time it will find the um, my router, It'll analyze. It'll be able to sort itself out with the password and stuff. Uh, in which case, it'll be then registered onto my network. So it seems to have worked. It's given me an IP address, so it has connected to my network. And I'm just going to click Proceed to the main config. It should now open up into the configuration screen.
In my next video I'll have a look at um, setting this up. So I'm going to set it up just now and then I'm going to make a video which I'll, I'll show you the main kind of settings um, for setting this up with one of the channels.